<laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, ooh, Jules has a good question. We will get to that. Okay, so welcome to our Lunch and Learn After Dark. I know it seems funny that we're calling it that, but we want people to be able to recognize that this is the Lunch and Learn, but we've moved it to nighttime for those people who haven't been able to join us. So we need to really make sure we reach out to those people so that they, they know that we're having this on Wednesday nights. Um, and so the lunch and learn in general is where we come together to inspire each other. Okay, learn from each other, inspire each other and go out and share. We're kind of like, you know, plugging in the, the phone to the charger so we get that um, extra boost and we could go out and feel confident. So tonight we're going to focus on teachers so we feel confident that we know this is a great thing for teachers and we'll have, you know, some stories and we'll share our experiences that we've had with teachers and things like that. And it's very natural for teachers to share good things. I'm sure just like we have, and that we've found this um, to be really good. So we're going to talk to some of our guests today, but we really actually are going to be very interactive with each other too. So as you have questions like Jules put in there, um, I want to encourage you guys to put questions in the chat and we're going to ask some of our uh, people who we've asked to join us some questions, but also we're going to ask other people some questions or to comment. Okay, so make sure it's interactive. We love that. Um, so we're going to keep in mind, first of all, let's talk about who are teachers, like what type of person and why would this be a good fit for them, whether it's Juice Plus or the business of sharing Juice Plus. So, and that can be any of you guys who've had experience with teachers. Why do you think this would be a good thing for teachers? I know Jesse loves to talk, so I'm gonna just have Jesse talk first. Why this call is good for teachers? Is no, the what? business. Juice oh, the Plus business. or the business of That's sharing Juice Plus. I can answer that one, gosh, I mean, I, I feel like it's a great idea for everybody, but teachers, especially like if you have the whole summer off, like people are always worried about having, not having enough time. I know we all, we all fit it into our nooks and crannies of our lives, but you could really blast off with your business just, just in the summertime and, and who knows what could happen, you know, in three years time for me, I was able to walk away from my nine to five. So, you know, anything is possible. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a beautiful gift for everybody. Great, thank you, Jesse. Who else would like to comment on that? Julie. I think it's so ideal for teachers because what we do with Juice Plus is we really share from our heart education with people. And we, we actually do the same thing over and over and over again. And that's what teachers do. They have a lesson plan and they just teach the same things over and over. And you just get really good and confident with your content year after year after year. And you learn a little bit more and that's exactly what we do. Okay. I would like to comment. Go ahead. I think it's good for teachers because a lot of teachers, um, a lot of ladies get into teaching because they want, um, you know, a schedule that's best for their family and for the kids and stuff. And I think, so a teaching schedule, I mean, I'm not saying it's e a teaching schedule is easy. I, I used to be a teacher in the classroom, um, but you do get out at a certain time. And sometimes if you're teaching at the right grade level, like either elementary or high school, you get out a little bit earlier. Um, you also get those built in days off. So I think there's a lot of um, room in your schedule. I think a lot of teachers have a good work life balance and have other interests. So I think Juice Plus is a great thing that you can kind of work alongside being a teacher. Okay, who else? I'll comment you, Sharon. Go ahead. I think as a teacher, you obviously have passion and like Julie said, care for others. Um, so if you're going to be a math teacher, you obviously love math. You know, if you're a science teacher, you love science and that comes out in your lessons and your planning and your time and your dedication. So I think the juice plus business can easily fall into a teacher's lap if they have that passion to inspire healthy living. And if they're already health conscious and we're already teaching others. So if you have that passion you already live that lifestyle, 
it only seems natural to share it with others. Thank you. Yes, because with Juice Plus, we just we work on getting healthy ourselves and then we share good things, right? As we're on our health journey. Um, so Caitlin, I know that um, you've been called out as a teacher. So, you know, answer the question also, if you don't mind. Yeah, I saw that. Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm a teacher in California, and I actually kind of use the business also in my teaching where I share a lot with my students. I work at an independent study program. Um, so a lot of my students are just like figuring life out. And I've been like teaching a lot of them about like being healthier. So it's been great to like be able to share that with them. And like we have a tower garden at our school now. And um, being able to like share it with all the teachers and the staff that are there has has been really great being able to just like share those opportunities um, but my school's a little different because it's year round so it's a little different where we don't have summers off but it's just a great way of you know sharing a way of being healthier and bringing that into your life especially like teachers are like some of the people that are like front lines getting sick with like COVID and things like that so you know it's really important for teachers especially to stay healthy since we're obviously so needed. Right. So that is one of my other questions. So for teachers, what about the juice plus product or the things that we have to offer, you know, recipe books, salad in a jar. I had one teacher who went and implemented salad in a jar where they'd go at seven in the morning, they would all make their salad in a jar and they'd put it in a refrigerator for the week, like say four or five of them, and they would have their lunch already ready. And that was an opportunity for them to share other healthy hacks or juice plus or complete making smoothies or anything like that. Um, how do teachers usually eat or what types of ailments might they have? Because I mean, how do you guys even go to the bathroom? You got class after class after class, right? And then you don't have a lot of time to eat. So um, give us a picture of that. Anyone who wants to comment, whether you're a teacher or or whether you know these types of things about teachers? I'll go first. Go ahead. Melissa, you wanna go Melissa's first? Melissa's like, let me go first. This is <laughs> Jen's sister. Go ahead, Melissa. I will volunteer for Jennifer that when she comes home, I mean, definitely I typed in the chat like head and neck because you're, you know, you just get stressed with little kids and I can remember you know, Jennifer was a kindergarten teacher and then she had kids and she was like, no, I'm sorry, they're too small. Like she had to move up. But I think one of the, it's funny just because we're family, but the one thing that happens when she comes home is she's still talking at that teacher level <laughs> about like letting her stress out and of the day. And she's still talking and we're like, okay, gotta go now. It's time to go back down. <laughs> so I think it's just stressful and it's even more stressful these days now with COVID, the kids just don't seem to have an attention span. Mm, yes. Okay, Jennifer. So I'm going to go back to the lunch question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whichever part you want to talk about. <laughs> um, so what works for me is to meal prep on a Sunday, even though it takes time. And I do make the salad in a jar. And there I usually make four because sometimes on the fifth day, you know what I mean? We might have leftovers or something, but then it's real easy to grab and go in the morning. And then I know I have something healthy with me for my lunch. As an elementary teacher, we do have a half hour um, and we actually drop our kids off. So we have to walk them to the cafeteria. So it kind of does force you to go to the staff lounge, you know, get your lunch and take a little break. We may not have a full half hour, but we have at least, you know, 20 minutes where we can eat our lunch and okay. try to use the bathroom. <laughs> and try to use the bathroom. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Caitlin? Well, some some teachers oh. are eating school lunch still. I know when Joel mm -hmm. Herps, Julie's husband, got his first principal job, he called me and said, Hey, I got a school. We gotta, you gotta come. So I quit, I quit my school and went over there with him. And we would eat in the cafe, school cafeteria all the time and go up to the cooking classroom and sample what they had. Well, Joel gained what about a hundred pounds, Julie? Yeah. He literally gained a hundred pounds. So some teachers are eating school lunches their whole life, and it's not a pretty sight. And there's lots of goodies too. I remember eating three breakfasts because yeah. I was a guidance counselor. 
<laughs> so on, I had already had something at home. Then on my way, I had something. I would have very bad habits in the past. And then you'd get there and there'd be bagels or donuts or something. There's always something, you know, that people are bringing in, right? Is that the way it is with you, Jennifer? Um, well, <laughs> or you don't get to hang out in the office. I'm the one that will go in the, the office, staff so. lounge and see like cookies and I will eat them no matter who made them. And my teammates are like, you don't even know who I made, who made that. And I'm like, yeah, but it's a cookie. Right. <laughs> so, so yes, I am very guilty to go in the staff lounge and see any baked good and I will eat it. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I was, I was going to say was I, I had to be at school at like, seven or seven fifteen. That is so early. And I used to not eat a good breakfast. And so when I started using the complete, ah, that was such a game changer, you know, because the complete has such a great balance of fiber and um, complex carbs and protein and all that. And I just noticed that not only did my ups and downs, my highs and lows go away in the morning, but I, I didn't, I lost that energy collapse in the afternoon with both the capsules and the shake, you know, and I think we hear that from a lot of people also at work, we all tell each other what we do. So teachers, I mean, you have to do the business of your teacher because they're going to start asking you. And that's what happened to me. They were like, Julie, what, did you change your makeup? Your face looks different. And I was like, oh, it must be Juice Plus. And then they all wanted Juice Plus. They've all been customers for so, so long too. All of those teachers that I used to work with, they're all, they all swear by Juice Plus. They wouldn't be a day without it. Since you're bringing me back in time, I'll have to mention that um, Julie introduced being a partner of Juice Plus to me 22 or more years ago. And one of the things she said was, everybody's bringing people to me. And so, you know, she was just because of her health changes, inspiring people to bring other people. So that, that was great. And um, anyway, I know for me, some of my first customers were teachers and they have not quit. <laughs> it's like minor math teachers, the ones I got as customers right away, because I was in the guidance counselor office and the, the ones I have, you know, they didn't, have the headaches that they used to have, and they could also sleep through the night. So um, once you get a teacher on Juice Plus, they're very regimented and they stay on Juice Plus. Caitlin, do you want to add to that conversation? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. A couple of my customers are very much like gung-ho and that's their routine too. And, and I think it just falls in to place really easily for a teacher because you have to be so routine-based in order to work with all of your kids. Um, and I, I also wanted to just add when you were talking about the lunch thing that um, I have become the wellness coordinator at my school. Um, so like I run uh, like bi-monthly events. Um, so I've done like um, a smoothie event and I did a salad in a jar event. So like teaching students like how to meal prep and like staff had a meal prep. Um, and I've even had some students that'll like come in with their jar and be like, look, Miss Swan, look, I made a salad. And like, they like are so proud of it and so excited. And then they'll like pull, you know, lettuce off of our, our tower garden that we have at school and be like, oh, I just made like this great thing. Um, so it's just been really amazing to see all of that and like see the students learn more and understand more and bring it to their families. And some of our students are also parents because um, we have teen parents. So it's been great for them to be able to bring like healthier decisions and healthier ideas to themselves, their families, their children, um, and also the staff too. So it's, it's just been amazing with all of that and being able to share those events with them too. Wow, it sounds like you're really creating a healthier community at your school, right? Pretty much, that's like the, the goal. I actually, um, a friend of mine um, totally just surprised me a couple of weeks ago. I don't even think I told Jesse yet, um, but a friend of mine just surprised me like a week ago where she's part of Kiwanis and they like gave me a, a community service award because I've been like sharing it with like the local community and like helping everyone to just be healthier and helping the school be healthier. And like, I mean, I was like so surprised about that, but I'm like, I just wanna help people be healthy because we're, as a, a country, we're so unhealthy and there's just so much we can do about it. Just like one simple change at a time. Wow. I know you guys probably have questions for Caitlin. 
<laughs> so put them in the chat for sure. Okay. Cause I mean, she's mentioned that she's got tower gardens in the school, salad jars in the school, smoothies in the school, you know, ask some questions. You guys are welcome to ask questions. I have a question. Go ahead. So I've never been like a, a teacher and a juice plus partner at the same time. Cause it happened later for me. So as a teacher, you know, you probably have like your, you know, usually it's organized into departments or something. So you have like a few teachers that you're in the same department with, but how, how do you spread out and kind of get to know everybody? Like what did, are you intentional with that? Or how does it work for you to just meet everybody and really influence everybody? Well, I'm like the queen of being the joiner. Like if there's a committee, like I want to join that. If there's like a, an activity going on, I want to check that out. If there's an event that's being planned, I want to be part of that. Um, Cause I just love like being around people and getting to know people, which is also what makes this business so fun for me. Cause I get to know a million different people um, from everywhere. Um, but in a school setting, I've worked in really different types of schools, never like a, a big like public school. I haven't worked there. I've worked mostly in charter schools and non-public schools or private schools. Um, but the place that I work right now, which is, has also been very open and like interested in being healthier and bringing a lot of this health awareness to students. It's a, an independent study program where like we're all just in one big room um, is how kind of like the classroom quote unquote works. Um, so it's easy to just like our English teachers are right there. Our math teachers are right there. The history teachers are right there. So there's only about, I think we have 11 teachers right now or 10 teachers right now, um, but we're all in the same room. So everyone's seeing the same stuff. Everyone's hearing kind of like those conversations about being healthy. So my partner teacher the other day, she's like, oh, Miss Swan, I have a question. And I was like, okay. And I thought she was totally gonna ask me about her schoolwork because her teacher wasn't sitting there. And she goes, so I need to like lose a few pounds and I need to like be eating healthier. And like, you're like all knowledgeable about all the healthy things. So like, what should I be eating? And I was like, wait, what? Like, I, it just like took me by surprise. So like, it, it makes it a lot easier in this setting to just share with everyone and be able to talk to everyone. And then they're all just like fascinated by it. And they're like, how does this tower garden work? How does that work? What's like these gummies that you like you eat sometimes in the afternoon because I'm like I need to pick me up because I'm tired <laughs> you know so it, it's been a really easy way to spread that knowledge and share different things like recipes or meal prep ideas or exercise ideas or pretty much anything that is partly related to juice plus wow we have so much that we can offer and you're really being an instrument of that you know sharing all the time um who else would like to comment on that or ask a question? Jennifer, do you have any questions of Caitlin? It sounds like you're probably at two different types of schools. Caitlin's school sounds like different than mm -hmm. other schools that we've um, probably encountered. Is it a, a private school, Caitlin? It's a charter school that's like focused on like trauma infused teaching and like students that like just can't handle the, the structure of like a typical, you know, eight to two, eight to three, school day so independent study where they, they have appointments they come in on whatever their days are or whatever their times are and like some come every day but it just really depends so any on any given day it could be like 30 different students that we might come into contact with but it just depends and it sounded like you said that they are in fact distributors also is that true uh, they're they're not distributors oh okay no. You said you're the wellness. Oh, you said you're the wellness coordinator. Oh, yeah. I thought they were. Okay. I, it, that's just what uh, my, uh, my boss chose to create that position for me because oh. I've just been like innately sharing, like being healthier and like bringing some of those healthier things into campus. Just like you said, like there's still always all kinds of food and like, you know, goodies everywhere. And I'm always like, oh, like, you know, what's in that? What else can we try? What else can we bring? And so I'm like part of that, like part of the, the group that orders all of the healthier snacks and has healthier options for students and for staff and making sure when stuff comes in, there are healthier options. So everyone can partake in something that's there. Okay, Jennifer, do you have any questions of Caitlin? I mean, that sounds like no, she's got- <laughs> Got the world at her fingertips there. 
yeah, it seems like a, well, obviously a completely different world of what I'm going through right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't like that in our high school either. So, you know, every teacher and every, you know, place is going to be different, right? There's going to be daycares. There's going to be, you know, all types of different places to share with teachers. Um, Jennifer, have you shared Juice Plus or the business of Juice Plus with other teachers? Have they been pretty open to making a secondary stream of income um, during the school year or during the summer or at all? Like, what is your, what's been your experience? Well, in the elementary, all of our in services are together. We were K through five and now we're K through four. So all of the teachers are always together. So you know everyone in, practically in the building. That's great. Um, yeah, so, so really we're always together. Um, usually we have to sit with grade level, but then there's two grade levels at one table and you really get to know everyone, especially after being in the district for how many years. And just um, like Caitlin said about different groups um, or meetings that there are, we have different, you know, different groups and different teachers involved in different meetings and you get to interact in that way as well. So there's always opportunities um, that come up about fitness or exercising or, you know, what are you eating and what is that, you know what I mean, like a smoothie or the energy bites. So there's always opportunities to share. And, you know, the more and more I do this as people are talking, you know, inside my head, I'm making mental notes. Ooh, I want to talk to them later. You know, I don't want to kind of point them out in front of everyone because that's just not my style. So I'll talk to them privately later. Um, wait, there was something else I wanted to say. Oh, about the business. So I have reached out to some teachers about the business and it's, it's funny because I'm working the same hours as they are, you know, and we're both probably there before we need to be, and we're taking things home and I'm consciously making an effort to still do a little bit of my juice plus business, like first thing in the morning when I get to school and, um, then I can do nothing for the seven hours <laughs> and then I'll follow up in the evening. But everyone that I've kind of asked about the business, they might be interested, um, but they'll have to wait to think about it until school's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like their mind is clear and their plate is clear from everything. Okay, so let's hear um, any responses from Caitlin or Julie or Doug. Um, as to what you would say to those teachers. <laughs> Nobody say, wants to. I would say great. I, I, I understand. Uh, let's, let's set a time or you want to meet up or whatever, like go have coffee or um, just set a time now, you know, since they're kind of committing now, once they're, once they're off for summer, who knows? It'd be like herding cats. I always invited people to, to take a look at what I was doing and I still do the same exact verbiage today is, you know, I don't know if you could get excited about this like I am, but I'd love to share with you what what I'm doing and just see maybe this would be a good fit for you. And so you could do that after school, you could do it on a Saturday at your house to after I've been I've I've done um, events many times after school with faculties um, over these years, and you know I know that my perspective of this business for a teacher is totally different today than it was when I was a teacher a long time ago starting this business. I mean, this business has changed everything in our lives for us, has given us options. And we were both educators. I mean, that's what we were doing and there was a ceiling. Um, so I get excited today about sharing that with people who are just at the beginning because they don't have the same vision of this business as Sharon and Doug and I do today. It's like, oh, do this. <laughs> don't miss this. Oh my gosh. Listen to me. No, I'm just kidding. You don't want to shake people, but you do want to say, oh my goodness, do you have a few minutes? Can I just tell you about this? Maybe it would be a fit for you. Maybe it won't. Um, I also just love the education. I shared 
back then it was audio tapes when I was teaching, but I would share those audio tapes and follow up just like we do today when we text a video. And I would say, did you get a chance to listen? Did you get a chance? And when they did get a chance to listen, it not only did it create conversation between the two of us, it was a domino effect. Like Caitlin was saying, even though we weren't all in the same room, teachers hang out together all day long. We talk to each other, you know, we're, we're friends. So it's a domino effect, you know, same thing in church, you know, we're all church friends, we all tell each other things. And it's that domino effect that you depend on as you're doing this business too. one friend tells another friend and that kind of thing. Thank you, Julie. Anybody else? Sharon, I was going to say that sometimes people have in their head an idea of what it would take to do this, like sharing with people. I mean, I think a lot of times people's plate is just full, like their life is full and they just can't even imagine adding one more thing. And so the idea is, oh, I'll wait till the summer. You know, you can talk to moms of little kids or kids that are in school or in a lot of sports and it's after softball, after football is over, after, you know, the kids are home from summer, when the kids go back to school, you know, whatever it is, you can always find after the holidays, whatever that is. So a lot of times they just have in their head, um, I can't even add one more thing, but they're expecting it to be something very different than what this is. And it really is just listening for the need in people's lives. So if they're excited about Juice Plus already, like they're, and the point of somebody being the most excited would be when they order Juice Plus, you know, when they first order it, that's when that's to have, you know, conversation at that time and not wait four months necessarily. But sometimes you're just planting, you know, seeds that of the invitation, like Julie said, but um, maybe it's, they're just not excited about the mission or really have caught the, the, you know, excitement that we feel of, how do you not tell somebody about this? You know, there's so many people in our lives that need this. And that's what this business is. It's sharing something that's very simple, fruits and vegetables in a capsule with people that need it, which is pretty much everyone. And it's listening to that conversation or, you know, revisiting conversations you've had with people in the past, but it doesn't have to be super difficult and it doesn't have to be hours of work, especially just getting started. Then somebody is excited and then you want to do more, you know, it's not like Jen is forcing herself to do juice plus work before school. Like she wants to do that. And then she wants to revisit it because it is an area you can continue to grow. Your mind is continuing to be fed and you're not just focused on the kids in your classroom and maybe what's happening in the school system or in the district or the bureaucracy of all the paperwork. You know, I hear that often of teachers, but it's something positive, it's a happy, community that loves what they're doing and you get to be a part of that so sometimes people think of it as another job or something else to do but they miss the mission of the joy of making such a difference in people's lives jennifer you want to comment on what stacy said yeah i love that last thing she just said and i'm looking for a pen so i can write it down <laughs> Okay. Not it in the chat, but what's that saying that we that that we have in Juice Plus? I I know we heard it at conference. Um, you don't want to believe their excuses, something like that. I can't think of the my brain doesn't work. Watch either. watch their steps or something instead of what they say. No, it's like you don't want to believe their excuses. Like you, oh, like you don't want to buy into. Their yeah, excuses. yeah, wanna, they overcome their quote objections anyway because you know what's good for them like julie said yeah. you do you want to like go oh please understand so right. you have to kind of do the feel felt found where it's like oh my gosh i know how you feel other people have felt the same way but once they took a look at what actually was involved like stacy's saying then they say like, I'm so thankful you didn't give up on me. You know, I'm, I thank you for not listening to me, you know, and, and, you know, they'll, everybody has their excuses, right. And the, the teaching season might be busy. And a lot of times I find that people are busier over the summer, you know, because, you know, you want to do all these things, but, um, not, not really not lit, not, not listening to them. You want to listen to them, the feel felt found, but also not 
stopping and, and letting and believing their excuses because we know what we know and we know how much this could change their lives. So like for me, like is the, you know, the third party validation uh, is, I, I put that in the chat. Um, it has been big for me, you know, always just continue to invite them. Like, like if they're not ready yet and they want to, you know, wait and take a look, that's fine. I, this great event is happening. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. You have to, you know, be excited about it. And, and just continuing to invite them to things because eventually they're going to see something that's going to click for them. They're going to hear somebody else's testimony or, uh, you know, story of hope and maybe from another teacher where they're fitting it into their lives and they're having success and they're changing people's lives. And, you know, and maybe they hear something and they're like, wow, you know, I could do this. So anyway, <laughs> thank you, Jesse. Yes. Yeah, so events and just continuing to um, give them exposure to what it really is instead of what they think it is, which is like, oh my gosh, I can't handle it. It's not that big of a deal for me. I was a guidance counselor, pregnant, working full time, you know, as a guidance counselor, I had a baby at home, but I was excited. I was super excited to learn everything I was learning through the Juice Plus company and our network of professionals. So, I mean, I was fueled by that because I had never learned all that <laughs> growing up and even into my thirties, I didn't know about oxidative stress and every day you don't eat enough fruits and vegetables. It's like standing in front of an x-ray machine. I really felt everybody needed to listen to what I was listening to. So, you know, really it's quote, selling them or sharing them tapes or CDs or links, you know, um, of what not tapes anymore, sorry, but, um, links of education from what we've learned, you know, cause we're so thankful that we've learned all this. And if they just want to listen to it on their way to school or, um, you know, on their way home, or maybe later when they're doing laundry or dishes or whatever, they're going to get that education and maybe get that excitement. But I remember um, when I started, they said, share with two people a day. So I did, that's how I did it. And it really wasn't a big deal. And people were very receptive and, um, and they come back to me. One of them was the guidance counselor next to me. And she's like, I want this. How do I get a discount? So those are two things you want to hear right in a row. And then I told her, you know, maybe it's about five customers that you need to have that'll pay for your own product. And then um, she goes, well, I'm getting 10. I'm like, okay. She was just a go-getter. And so she went out and got 10 and went got many, many more over the years and passed me up even in um, the compensation plan because she was so excited. And so I think when people really catch that excitement or catch that we have something really, really good to share, I mean, how long does it take? I mean, we're sharing, at least me, about Siri, the Roomba, uh, you know, all kinds of things that we include in our day, right? It's just a matter of 30 seconds, maybe, of excitement, sharing some kind of education or event, and then following up. Hey, what'd you think? Dougie? Hey, well, I think we have a, a, a comment from Aaron Hetrick. Here he is. What's up? <laughs> Great. Go ahead. Hi. So I just wanted to be supportive of Melissa. So He's I'm a, a teacher. Yeah, I, I teach in a large public school. I'm a music teacher. Um, it's a large program. So normal year, I'm at rehearsals two or three days a week. So like just tonight, I just got home from work. I'm still in my work clothes. I just walked in like less than a half hour ago. And um, for me to teach lessons, my lunch period, I take my lunch period at 930 in the morning. So my schedule, my, my meal schedule is all out of whack. So I found like when I do take the juice plus, um, first of all, it's, it's good. And I want to take it because I never took vitamins ever before in my entire life. But like, the gummies, they taste pretty good. So I do take them. Yes. And I know they're not a, um, knowing it's not a meal substitute, but because my, my meal schedule is so kind of out of whack, um, when I take them, I find that it curbs my snacking. So instead of like reaching for um, a pack of ramen or some chips or whatever, um, I'll have the gummies. And in fact, after you know, normally I find myself craving more fruits and vegetables. So I have been feeling with a little bit more energy and eating better since. So thank you. Support. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Aaron is an excellent drummer and he's a, he's a band director. So we actually have a lot in common. We should talk more. 
<laughs> yeah, he could. <laughs> but of course, he is an active band director and gigging drummer, so he's a very busy man. <laughs> very busy Doug. man. Right. Doug had a question. I had a question. I was going to, um, and I was thinking of Julie, because I've heard her talk. I mean, I've talked to Julie a lot over the years. But I was, I was, I think a lot of people would benefit from hearing because like Stacy was saying, people think they know what we do and they, and especially when you get into a leadership level, people just assume they're always like, Doug and Sharon, I know you're so busy that you don't really have time to answer a question. And it's like, pretty much we're not that busy guys. It's okay. But um, my question is, um, how can one fit this business into their life at a level that'll see growth? Not just like kind of doing the business and like staying at the $300 a month level forever, but seeing it grow. How can they fit that in while juggling the day job and having kids and a spouse and exercising and all the things that we have to do in our busy life? How is it possible? So we have heard from so many people, you guys, over these years, we've been doing this for over 22 years and you would just be amazed. I mean, I will never forget hearing a truck driver. She was a truck driver. She reached the highest level in our company and she built her business from truck stop to truck stop. <laughs> she, I mean, I, I, I'm laughing only because it's so unbelievable, but you do this in stolen moments and there's a lot of hours in the day. I mean, just kind of pay attention to what you do all day. There's a lot of lulls. There's a lot of moments and you can be getting juice plus stuff done in those moments and it can make a tremendous difference in building this business and growing your paycheck. But, you know, let's just take a teacher schedule. So for me, I was at school by 715. I was out at 230. So then I would stay after school for a couple hours. Sometimes it, I was, you know, like um, your husband, Melissa, um, I was I was there until late, you know, I would stay until my work was done. And if the kids wanted to stay after school, I opened my room and they could come in, but I was usually home, you know, by five o'clock and then I would have dinner and stuff. I mean, from seven to nine o'clock, if you could work on juice plus between seven and nine each night and just do some follow-ups, plan events, do events, you know, basically, I mean, you could build your business for 10 hours, that's 10 hours a week. And then you could work a couple more hours on a Saturday or a Sunday. That's huge. That's a part-time job right there. If you put that part-time effort in, and what would you be doing? Well, you're not only going to work Juice Plus for two hours in the evening, because you're going to share during the day. You can share at school. You can share, you know, in the morning. And I had a drive to and from work. I would listen to uh, audios in the car so I was doing personal growth and education with Juice Plus, but I would also make phone calls and stuff in the car too. So you can do that. Um, and basically we do six things. We do something called the two by two by two by two, which I'll come back to in a second. We do events and it's so nice that we can do them virtually now. We didn't have that growing our business. We only had to do it at the homes um, events. And then we do three-way calls and zooms and that's huge you always want to get good at saying oh i would love for you to hear my friend sharon's story do you have 10 minutes one day when you can hear because when you bring another person into a conversation that gives people a lot of vision so events three-way calls you know and then you're you're doing things like checking social media and we use voxer and things like that but the two by two by two by two is the bulk of what we do and that's a series of eight different reach outs every day. You talk to two new people, like Sharon said, and then you follow up with two people and then you do two customer reach outs because those customers and a lot of these teachers that get on Juice Plus, they might not want to do the business right away. I agree with Stacy. Let's share the excitement of that, you know, right away when they're ordering. Um, but sometimes they just want to be a customer and that's okay. Through the education, they're like, you're kidding. My skin cleared up because of juice plus. Oh, I'm telling everybody, you know, all of a sudden they have a result, but that happens. And the realization of that through customer care. Okay. And then the last set of two is reaching out to team members as you begin to grow and teachers do that so well too. You guys, it's the same thing with sharing juice plus. We do the same thing over and over. Well, that's how we teach our business to other people. We, we teach the system over and over and over. And then that teacher takes this business and runs with it. And they've duplicated their own business. So 
that's really, did I leave anything out? The six things, the two by two by two by two events, three-way calls, and then we have like Voxer and social media, such a gift today, and then personal growth. So it's just a handful of little things, you guys, and it's wash, rinse, repeat. And some of them will be scary at first because they're uncomfortable. You've never done them before. It's like, how do I ask somebody for their credit card? That scared me to death. Well, after I did it 10 times, I'm like, no problem. This was the best decision we ever made. All I need is your credit card, you know, to get you started. And they take all, you know, they take American Express, all the, you know, I would talk because I was nervous, but <laughs> then eventually I'm like, all I need is a credit card and I can get you started, you know, and it just got easier. I think so by Julie, the end of 60 oh. days, you know, the whole business. I mean, you know, like what to do and all that stuff is not that difficult. Go ahead, Dougie. But what, what Stacy said in the comments just now is consistent effort of talking to people. So Julie, when it comes to like those, I mean, that's so key because anybody, everybody that that's a partner has done everything they need to do to make it all the way to NMD already, probably. It's just, you haven't done it consistently over and over and over. Mm -hmm. So Julie, when it comes to those moments where it's a time of personal growth and you have to make like a hard phone call or I remember when Sharon didn't want to do a presentation, like what, how do you get over that hurdle? Because some people, when they face the, that hurdle, they mm -hmm. say, no, I just can't go there. It's, it's your why, you guys. And this is what I was saying earlier. I just want to tell you that you can do this business and you can build a paycheck and you can teach a little bit if you want to and not a lot anymore, <laughs> or you can come home and work from home. You really can have options with this. What if you begin to build a paycheck and you guys can take the most incredible vacation in the summers, you know, because you're doing your juice plus business all throughout the year and you're building that paycheck. So it really, the answer to Doug's question is it comes down to why do you want this? And what are you willing to do to really make it grow? And for me, you guys, I didn't believe I could do this at first, but as my paycheck started to grow, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm making $500 a month. <laughs> wow, I wonder if I could make a thousand. And then I made a thousand and I was like, that's 12,000 a year. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me make 1,500, 2,000. You know, it just kept kind of growing. And I just want to give you vision that you can do that too. And all of a sudden you begin to see things differently. It's like, what if, oh my goodness, what if I, you know, had this whole extra income? My husband and I, we laughed. I remember us getting so excited about a $1,200 tax return check. We dreamed about what we were going to do with our $1,200 tax return. We're like, what should we buy? Should we do something? Should we take a vacation? Should we? And now, I mean, what an amazing thought to think back on that and how excited we got over $1,200 and we could grow a massive income with this business, you know, but you can do as much or as little as you want, you guys. So I hope that gets you excited. You can start dreaming and that might not happen, but as you make those uncomfortable moments happen, that paycheck's going to keep growing and growing and growing. And you're, you're going to say, okay, bring it on. Let me do another one. I can do more. And all of a sudden follow-up that you're so scared of becomes your favorite part because you see all these people's lives changing because you're choosing to follow up. That dawned on me one day, we had a dear friend of ours, a father, and he was having a really, really hard time. And I, you know, I won't disclose exactly what it was, but he shared that with me. And he said, Julie Juice Plus has changed that for me. And he said, I honestly just want to thank you. And he has tears in his eyes. And I was just standing there thinking, oh my goodness, what if I had not shared with him? And you guys are going to get to that point. You just got to go out there and be bold because this is not only about you and what, what you can do with this business, but it's about the lives that you're going to change all along the way. I mean, there's a lot of them on here. So speaking of that, um, Melody, so, you know, might change lives for juice plus for health, but also quality of life, like we've experienced. Um, so Melody says, what do you say to a teacher who says, I'm not a salesperson? You know, it's an objection. So how do you handle that, Julie? Yes. So I would just say, you know, I totally understand how you feel because that's how I felt. I didn't want to be a salesperson. And there was one night that changed that for me. It's it was an event where I heard a nurse speaking and she called Juice Plus a gift. She said when she shares Juice Plus, it has a red bow on it in her mind. 
And that was the night where she really pulled me out of being scared of selling and helped me understand sharing juice plus is like giving a gift to people. You know, it's, it's so wonderful. So you just have to share from your heart about that. And you can say, you know, I understand how you feel. You know, a lot of people feel like that. If you didn't feel like that, just say a lot of people feel like that, but really this is sharing something that you love, like a book or a movie. That's what we do. We tell people, to, oh, you got to go see this movie. I do it all the time. I'm like, oh, we just watched this and you have to watch it with your daughter or whatever it is. And I don't get paid by the movie theater when I tell them that. It's the same thing we do with Juice Plus, you know, go eat at this restaurant, go buy this, you know. Good. And somebody said belief is super important. That is so true. Your belief, that's the secret sauce. Your belief will make you open your mouth at those awkward moments, you know? And I remember on my way to work, I would listen to the Juice Plus um, audio tapes in the car today. We have videos. I would listen. And by the time I got to work, I had listened to Mitra Ray in the car and I would be like, I, who, who can I talk to when I get inside the door? I was just like, and they would see it. I would go, oh my goodness. I just listened to this. I can't, you have to hear this. <laughs> I mean, I can't even believe what she just said about cortisol or whatever. I would say one little teaser piece from the audio tape. And I would say, wait till you hear what he says about oxidative stress. I didn't even really understand that. It's so incredible. And they're like, okay, <laughs> they're taking the tape. And then they would listen to it, you know? So it's your excitement and your belief gets built as you get yourself educated. So work on having your belief a 10 in Juice Plus, a 10 in the company, a 10 in this industry. Don't let network marketing scare you. No, this kind of business is a beautiful thing. I mean, my husband's like, they should teach this in college, you know, this kind of business. Now there's a lot of companies that don't do it very well. Our company does it the best. I can just say that right now. We have the best comp plan. We have the best system. We have the best product. We just do. We're not supposed to say that, but we do. Okay. <laughs> and we're the number one selling nutritional product and a capsule in the world and the number one research. Um, and, and we also have benefits, the benefits package, you know, when you get to national marketing director, which was very attractive to me and why I didn't go back to being a guidance counselor, because I was bringing in a significant income for the family and I was able to bring home benefits. And um, I thought, oh my goodness, as a guidance counselor, I had no idea that even existed. So like Julie, it started with the car payment. I mean, that was, it didn't start with that. I thought it was rebate money. I thought it was just fun money. Um, but it, then it moved to car payment, then car and insurance. And then I was like, oh my gosh, it just paid the mortgage. And so, you know, it can be a lot more than maybe people even realize it can absolutely be that. And so I wanted to also talk about before we close intangibles, like what are the intangibles it's brought you? And Jennifer alluded to it on our last Zoom. I'm going to ask Caitlin for any comments. Plus, you know, what else has this brought you besides income? Um, and, you know, maybe it's passion and purpose, maybe it's whatever, but let's hear from you. And then we're going to go to Jennifer. The most important thing to me, and I, I know I mentioned it in my three-way call with Jesse and Carmen, um, and Carmen actually reminded me of this because for some reason she remembers our three-way call. Um, but when I had that call, I talked so much about how important community is, and that is like that that thing that's not about like the money it's not about like the business but like having all of these people in my life like I tell Jessie all the time she's one of my best friends like I adore her and I'm like I met her on Facebook like I mean how crazy is that but, like some of my closest friends I have are people that I've met from this business or through this business or through sharing this business and being able to build those relationships that are like so quality and genuine and be surrounded by such amazing people and being able to bring that to other people that either are already in your life or people that you meet is huge and and the other really big intangible thing for me is um, and Jesse knows how big this was for me is that like my mom bought into juice plus and we up until this past January had the worst relationship and she randomly was like sure I'll come to an event because you get points for your action game for that and and then was like oh yeah I think I want to try this and like we talk now and we're like we've gotten so much closer and it's like 
I mean, I'm 40 and I'm finally feeling like I actually have a connection with my mom. Um, so it's like, that's been like, if I, if I got paid $0 for the rest of my life, that one thing is worth it. Wow. I mean, we have heard over the years, it brings another dimension to an already usually wonderful relationship. I'm so glad to hear that, Caitlin, that it's really helped you guys. That's awesome. So we're going to go to Jennifer for the last couple of questions. One, now that you're going to be um, out for the summer, right? Is there like this thing where you're like at the gates, like, you know, in a race and you're like ready to hit the ground running um, with summer, you know, next Tuesday? And if so, how do you plan on ramping up the business or are you just steady as you go and you're not worried about summer versus school year? Um, Cause you have been super consistent all year. And then um, I wanna hear your intang intangibles also that have um, come from this business. Okay, so I think in the fall after conference, when we came back, I played the madness game and I think that's what really helped me continue to stay consistent along with the DMO planner and the DMO meeting on a Sunday night. So um, I needed, first, I love a competition. So I was working with this team of people that I didn't know anyone. So I needed to do my part. So that's when I started getting into, I take my daughter to the bus. So I'm already in the car and I go to school. So I'm there at least literally 45 minutes early than I need to be. So I started putting aside at least 15, 20 minutes. I literally come in, sit down and I'll work on the juice plus business. Um, but that helped me with the consistency. And then, like I said, following up in the evening, but as times through the year go, get busier, you know, report cards, conferences, then you're like going up and down and then you kind of get off from your DMO planning on a Sunday and then, you know, things aren't as consistent. So that's my number one thing to get back to that. So even though I have stayed consistent, um, you know, it has to be every single day and I have to get back to making sure that my DMO is written every Sunday so that I know what I'm doing for the week. So my plan is to be able to have more in-person events, attend the lunch and learns, and every morning, instead of 15 or 20 minutes, now I'm going to block off a bigger amount of time to focus on the business. Um, also connecting with my team. So on the way to school, oftentimes Melissa and I will talk about what we have coming up or you know, what we want to do, or I talk to this person and what do you think, or what can I say to them? How can I follow up? So we probably talk like at least four times a week, even if it's for a couple minutes on the way into school. Um, so I want to continue to help my team to grow. A couple team members have reached out to me. So rather than talking on text, I want to get together with them, like have coffee, have lunch, whatever have a glass of wine when we're not shredding, right? <laughs> um, and just have that conversation with them to see how can I help them move forward as well. Wonderful. And, and what are the intangibles that have come? I know you mentioned it last time. I just want to make sure um, people hear your heart about how much this business has brought to you um, besides the income. So during the pandemic, um, I started con to connect more with the community. So we had the conference that spring of 2020 and it was free and it was virtual. And I was like, hey, I might as well do this. Um, so uh, that's when I first started to plug in. And then I think I was able to plug into some of the lunch and learns because I was off for an hour from like 12 to one when we were virtual, I was off. So I was able to connect and literally eat my lunch during that time. And um, I started to connect more with my direct team with Jules and Bridget. And of course, then Melissa as well. Um, and then I met Kim and it just, everyone's so very friendly. And at first when I was very scared or skeptical, I, I felt comfort in going to these new friends and these supporters that would help me whether I was doing a little or a lot. And um, 
quite frankly, things have not gotten any easier over the years from 20 to 21 to 22. Um, and some days are harder than others. And last Wednesday, when you made me cry, <laughs> that was a good day at school. And I still cried. Um, but hey, so it doesn't sound good that I made you cry, Jennifer, if they don't know what happened on the last lunch and learn. <laughs> This oh, right. I'm thing. sorry. I forget. I forget. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so I just got a little emotional saying that I really love this community and the people I have met and the support they give me. And even after a very hard day when we might be having, when I might be having an event with my team or I might want to attend an event or my customers are attending an event, so I want to attend an event with them. You know, sometimes it might be like one more thing to do, but once I'm here with the people on the event or with my team, it, it brings joy to me and it like literally relaxes me, like, you know, from my neck down in my shoulders and it, it, it just brings me happiness. Yay. All right. I wanted people to hear your heart. You just are amazing. Thank you um, to our teachers who joined us. Doug, some closing remarks on well, our, our lunch and learn that we had today I just want to um, encourage you guys the there's so much good stuff that was um said on this it's almost worthy of a replay and um jennifer you know I, we love your story not because you cried about any of that stuff but because you you have hope and and you have a plan b you're working on and i don't th i think life is too short that's why i quit my job that's why Joel didn't take the job at the superintendent's office in Broward County, Florida, because life is too short, you know, to cry at your job. Life is too short to not see your kids growing up. Life is too short for whatever you're passionate about. If you have another option, I mean, we're, we're, and, and this, this, this company is awesome. The product is awesome. This community is awesome. So I encourage you guys to, to really um, think about what you want. And like Julie said, she's she's not making this stuff up, guys. It, you can do this business. Anybody can do this if you do it. You just got to do it. And how are you going to do it? You just got to find a way to fit it in. Yes, Melissa. Yeah. 